Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. We did it! Uh, uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Hello, Nikki. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Uh, Excuse me when I get fully dressed. <laughs> 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 Liam, you're matching! <laughs> Oh my days, it's happening. Holy cow, I can't believe it. I honestly can't believe it. Um, oh, my, oh my goodness. Well, before I get too far into this, Nikki, I would like to thank you very much for taking time out of your day to listen to us for however long this will be. Um, oh. You're welcome. I probably have about 40 minutes, something like that. All right, so we'll keep it nice and quick then. Um, perfect, perfect. So before we get too deep into things, I would like to give you, Nikki, some time to plug anything that you want right now. Um, so your shows, your book, whatever you want. Give me some time okay, for that. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, um, I have my... Wait, there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have my lovely memoir, Over the Hills and Far Away. And that is my memoir of my time of being a Teletubby that I wrote it during lockdown. And it came out in 2022, currently available in hardback, an audiobook. And I did the audiobook myself, which was a blast. Um, so that's available, kind of sharing all the, the secrets and what it was like, really, from the human perspective to be a giant yellow Teletubby. And then I'm also touring my show, Confessions of a Teletubby, which is kind of loosely based on the show and takes the audience through my, my story as a Teletubby. It's very funny. It's a very funny show and a um, little bit of audience participation, but not scarily. Um, so that's touring all over the UK at the moment. I'm doing nine shows at Edinburgh Fringe this year after having a roaring success last year with it. Good to hear that, Nikki, really. Glad you're having good success with all that you're doing, even in a show that has really only been hasn't been airing officially since 2001 the fact you're still getting positive attention from that is fantastic and of course yeah i mean and it's still available on youtube and people still like to watch the original version oh absolutely that's where we come in um yeah uh, i mean the reboot is okay but i think we know the quality product <laughs> you know what I, I i can't deny that i really can't um so yeah, um, I guess we should probably start with our introductions because you know you, you probably know who I am. I'm Teletubby fan, also known as Josh. Um, Hi, Josh. Hello. <laughs> um, I live in Canada and I studied. Whew, I studied for a good six years to be a teacher, an educator, and currently, right now, I work at a museum. Um, I do some other stuff as well. I also work on a Roblox game, which I'm hoping I can show you later. Um, but yeah. That's pretty much it. Good. <laughs> All right, Benji, your your go. Okay. Um, my name is Benji. Uh, I live in the United States. Uh, I'm not really in college, admittedly, but I work for a uh, packaging a uh, packaging company in a warehouse. I like your backdrop, Benji. Thank you very much. <laughs> Makes me feel very at home. Right. Thank you very just much. Just you wait. <laughs> and can we just take a moment to admire Benji's jacket right now? Like, <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> it's like an official crew jacket. That's because it is. That's because it is. <laughs> yeah. Nikki, I must ask: Does the name test the dress? <gasps> yeah, the lovely test the Tessa Madressa. I oh, laughed. that's fantastic! How did you get that? Um, I had a, uh, I was scrolling through eBay and I had noticed that there was a listing for this uh, under the name Pickwick Studios, and I believe it cost me around like seventy-five dollars, so roughly have it like Bargain. to buy it <laughs> yeah. and have it shipped. Um, and by the chance that you're still like in touch with Tessa, please tell her I said hello. I will. I should be smacking her wrist. Fancy getting rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days! Very nice. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, my and, uh, uh, hello, hello, Josh. 
Hello, Mickey. I am I'm Leon, and I'm from I'm from Ireland. I just want to say I've been a huge, huge Teletubbies fan since I was a baby, and as you can see on my head, I'm wearing the thing like you are. I'm wearing a yellow shirt. I have her next to me, and, oh, it um, <laughs> and I and I have this. Oh, that's so cool! I saw one of those at Comic Con in Glasgow that I did a couple of years ago, and I thought they were really cool. And I'm I'm trying not I'm trying not to sound like an idiot or anything, but I we're at Cat Express. How starstruck I am right now meeting oh. someone <laughs> meeting, meeting someone who was a big part of my childhood. And I just thank you. Oh, not at all. I also love your backdrop. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. And I, I just to point out, I have I think I've every single Teddy Tubby DVD ever released out all over the world. So that just shows how much I love the show. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We jokingly call him Blockbuster because he has so many DVDs sitting in his collection. Yeah, and he's yeah. also an encyclopedia. If there's any episode, I bet you he can tell you exactly the episode he got that screen cap from. That's how good he is. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, 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 do, I do know, actually. This is the background. is from an episode called Number 4, Version 2. There you go. I told you. He's good. Yeah. He's a walking encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. Yay! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Anyway. Oh. Richard. Thank you. Yeah. So, my name is, well, my, actually my nickname is Way J, but you can feel free to call me Richard if you want to. Now, I am one of the key developers of our Teletubbies game in Roblox, and um, my primary role involves building models for the game, and I also sometimes help other developers here and there whenever needed, you know that. Now, um, Teletubbies have been a huge part of my childhood, and as a it was a massive hit in my country in the early 2000s, and even though I might not be as passionate about the show as my colleagues here, being part of this niche community that we've diligently nurtured over the past three years genuinely fills me with immense pride. And I have to say that it is an immense pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to the person who has given life to a character remembered by millions of people around the globe and I just so happen to come from Slovakia. Slovakia, right. Yes. <laughs> so, All right, Hickory. I'm not actually British <laughs> as my accent suggests. Yeah. <laughs> you sound like you're from the Antipodes. <laughs> maybe, that's the, maybe, that's the, maybe that's the whole point. Well, anyhow, Hickory, your, your go to uh, introduce yourself. Oh God! <laughs> oh, um, hello. hello. Um, <laughs> um, my name is Hickory. Um, I come from the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, and um, I'm a small um, freelancer artist in the community. I just feel here and there. Uh, you might have seen little drawings on on social media that um, Josh had has tagged me on. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. I'm not much of a a big deal or anything like that. But. I see. Really I see you thing. have our lovely flowers. I love flowers. Yes. <laughs> God, I love. It, it's it's truly a, again fantastic and, and an, an amazing opportunity to um, meet you. you um, your book has been a, a major inspiration for me in my life. Oh, it, that's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> well, I guess that's everybody here. Um, I suppose I Hickory, that. would you? Would you like to start with the first question? Oh, <laughs> I think yeah. everybody wants to know, actually. Um, the most posing question is, uh, was it hot enough? I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I, I do have a very um, interesting question. I I currently do work for a studio. I'm, I'm delving my little grubby hands into what is the children's entertainment business as a illustrator and animator. And I wanted to ask you, you are part of one of the most iconic, uh, uh, you are an iconic puppeteer, an iconic performer. And I, I want to know, Teletubbies has been made with the utmost of 
consideration, quality, and thought in every little nook and cranny. And it's absolutely amazing. What is your opinion on TV shows today? Do you perchance um, think that they're being made with the same quality? Would they being made with the, 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 the same thought? Um, do they have the same intentions um, as um, the production you've worked on? And would definitely put all their heart and soul into the shows that they made. Um, do you think we should be doing more or less? Or what, what do you think about the current state of children's TV right now? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, the two things that come immediately to mind is that, firstly, I must come clean and say, I don't watch much children's television at the moment. Um, but I could still say I'm pretty sure that nobody puts as much care as Anne and Andy put into Teletubbies. Well, I mean, all of us, but those two in particular for, for having invented the thing. You know, that was part of the reason when I was going through the audition process as they sort of whittled down people and Anne came in one day and, and talked about what she wanted to do and she was so eloquent and passionate and had so much integrity that, you know, that was the point at which I really wanted the job. Up until then, you know, it was just a kind of another audition. Mm. But I just thought I've got to work with this woman because I, I thought she was a genius right off. You know, the, the amount of care. And, and, of course, she came from a teaching background and then had been in television for years and grown up television at first and then went into children. So her passion was always um, children's TV and particularly reading the first thing she did was book tower to try and encourage children to read and andy came his specialism was um child linguistics so the two of them together were kind of perfect and also they just had this instinctive feel for the, the way children's minds work and how to make meaningful communicative product for children and you know i mean i jested about the the reboot earlier but I think I think where it falls down is that there isn't we have loads of space and loads of time for the children watching to fill in their own thoughts and because 90% of the time they, they knew more than us you know so like the narrator would say one day in Teletubby land something appeared and the thing arrives you know and I'm like what's that but, uh, and then there's like a gap for the child to think well that's a chair <laughs> There I said, it was a chair. And Lala, oh, chair! Like she's never seen one before. And that's hilarious for the child, but it's also hugely empowering. You know, and I think the, the, the reboot, it's not as spacious. I don't think they even show the film on the tummies twice, or if they no. do, they're, they're much, they no. They cut Whereas it down. That, yeah, they cut the second the time down. That was key thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and I think that's it. Anne was brave enough to put the child really at the center of it and every decision made was just thinking about that child who was going to be watching the program and now you know it's much more financially driven <laughs> and so the, uh, that isn't the main I don't think that's the main focus anymore no. mm, yeah. which is a shame because yeah you know children need that <laughs> they do it's, it really is kind of the thing that I've thought about the reboot. It's it's the biggest blessing that the show is half as long as the original because kids' attention spans are so much less. But it's also a curse because that exactly what you said. Kids do not have time to... The reason why the, sec, why the TV events were played multiple times to the ire of many parents was because the second time the kid knew exactly what was going to happen every single step of the way. And That's right, and that, that to be able for the child to be able to make predictions and have those predictions come true, is hugely empowering and gives them an enormous faith in their own ability to learn. You know, and mm. that was a, a very important thing. And you say that attention spans are getting quicker, and everyone says that. Oh, that's what's happening, and it's a bad thing. And then does nothing to counteract that. You know, and actually, children. I think people underestimate how smart kids are. <laughs> You know, you give them the chance to interact with the thing, then they will. You hold their attention, then they will give it. 
But if you keep just, oh, well, we need to do it faster because that's how their attention spans work, then you're just perpetuating the problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a good point. And this, and this, and this, and this. Mm. Yeah. And not only yeah. that, but also kids nowadays are just missing out on the nobilities that we've experienced as children. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Because, like, as you said, like, that's why, like, in the original version, that's why I like a lot of the segments because when the narrator, like, tells the viewer, like, what the Teletubbies are, like, thinking or what they're doing, it gives them a minute to, like, process, like, oh, what's going to happen next? Or, like, if they were looking for a friend, like, wait, where's Paul? Like, the, the, it would give, like, it gives the viewers the chance, like, say, like, she's over there. Yes, that's right. And because um, you always heard us before you saw us, you know, you'd always hear that, la, 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 la. so the child has a mm. thought. Has, has a chance to think, oh, here comes Lala, and then they might see in the distance a little bit of yellow, and then as you get close and they see the wiggly aerial and, and the way that she stands, and and then, oh, yes, I was right, you know, so all of that gives, like you say, the, the child an immense amount of, of, of time to figure out what's happening. It's the same reason why the original Blue's Clues was so brilliant. It's the same oh, stuff. Yes, yes. yeah. yeah. It's a shame, really, that we have so much technology and like so many advantages right now in the modern times, but we don't, you know, use them to actually. The people just slap on, think kids can just watch anything. But if we perpetuate that cycle, then that's just what's going to happen. That's just what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I feel I'll just go to the child's face. Yeah. So I suppose I, I might as well go next with my question. So uh, there was one segment from an episode called Swimming with Stephanie. You might not know the exact episode, but it was the episode where the dome got filled with clouds. Do you remember anything about <laughs> filming that? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, that took a long, you know, people often say to me, how, how long does an episode take to film? And you think, well... You know, if it's everyone stands on one leg and falls over, you can knock it out in the morning. But if it's the entire dome fills with cloud for Nunu to tidy up, then that's going to take a week or so. I remember that one very well. It was extremely challenging for the art department. I think they did an incredible job. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have some behind-the-scenes photos of, I think it was when Dipsy was about to sit down in the seat. And there's cast members behind him holding up this fluffy cloud, like shaking it <laughs> behind him. It must have been a nightmare because you guys already can't see much already. You lower the light down in the dome, it's already bad enough. And now you have the risk of, I could walk into a crew member that has no protection at all, <laughs> right? It's that, well, you yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> because, I mean, when you think the narrator said, the Teddy Tubby found it rather inconvenient how they had cloud indoors. Yes. <laughs> it was spoilers. It wasn't just the Teletubbies. It was everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> but those things, you know, those really massive set pieces. They were just because we all. I don't think you go and work on something like that unless you have a certain amount of a sense of play and a sense of fun. So it was always really exciting when you got to do that kind of thing. It didn't matter about, you know, we couldn't see anything anyway. It didn't really matter whether or not you could see even less. <laughs> we were already half blind. <laughs> But, you know, there would be days when, I mean, most of the time, I'd be kind of hanging out for when we go for the script reading in the morning. Don't be me, don't be me, don't be me. So I'd have time to get some sleep or go for a swim or something. But on the days when this amazing thing would arrive, like the seesaw or the swing, or incredible, and you just go, oh, be me, be me, be me, because you just wanted to go and play, whatever it was. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and just as well, Lala was in both the swing and the seesaw. <laughs> yes, I loved that swing. I really wanted to take it home with me, but they wouldn't let me. It was so comfortable because when, when you were just in your normal human body, you could lie very comfortably sideways along it. <laughs> it was great. I liked that. And that was directed, well, well, you probably know this, that was directed by Nigel P. Harris. And out of all the directors we had, he was the one who was most likely to let us run with the thing. Right. You know, he wouldn't be like calling us oh, cut wow. or picking us back or anything. So yeah, mm. boy, that in not very many takes at all because he just let us go with it. And then it's mm. great because then you get to find your own rhythm to the thing, you know. Right. Absolutely, mm. Benji. Would mm. you like to start with yours? Sure. So my question would 
is we are aware of the backup heads as you described from your book, but what about the rest of the suit? Is the body seen in the first episode the same one seen in 2009's Children, Children's in Need music video, or did those eventually have to be replaced over time? Well, I think is they say, don't they, that when you reach a certain age, that you're in as a human, your entire body has actually changed, even though it's the same thing. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of what the Teletubby suits were like. I mean, they were phenomenally expensive. They cost like 30 grand or something each to make. Oh, Yeah, and all that time ago. So they weren't going, you know, they couldn't make half a dozen of them or anything. Right. But obviously there would be wear and tear. So usually during the winter when we didn't film, they might put some new toweling on the inside or they might replace bits that were worn out. But generally, it was the same the same suit the whole, the whole way through. All right. That's rather interesting, yeah. <laughs> I can only um, imagine. I can only imagine. <laughs> All right, Liam. Okay. Um, so one question that I've always wondered. So at the end of, well, towards the end of the first year of Tony Tubby's 1987, you did a series of Christmas episodes, like the one with the Christmas tree, and like each of the Tubbies got a present. The one you got, Lala's present, of the episode of making Christmas, making, yeah, making Christmas cards. Yes, I do. I do know that one. Um, uh, Morgan Encyclopedia, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, <laughs> um, but um, I gotta Very ask much. you. Um, I gotta ask you. Um, how long? Like, um, I gotta clear how to word this. Um, what what was it like filming? I found out that those episodes were actually filmed in summer of '97, and I gotta ask. What was it like filming Christmas episodes in ninety nine in nineteen ninety seven? I gotta ask this. I'm really curious. Okay. Well, um, the first batch of Christmas, I think, I think that happened in the first year. It might have been ninety seven. Might have been ninety six. The one with the Christmas tree and the presents. Yeah. And um, we had a kind of a not entirely successful go at having snow. You know, there was some pretend snow scattered about and and Mark Dean who played the new new he was there with this kind of like cannon of, of bones oh. where the one where Poe and I are dancing on the top of the hill and then we fall over actually genuinely falling over not acting oh. and then, I mean they were okay there was something really sweet about those episodes but um and he's quite a visionary and also you know by that by that time it was um it was clear that the show was going to be successful so we thought we needed to do another batch of Christmas episodes and that this time we'd do it properly. So we had um, possibly the company with the best name in the world, Snow Business, who are every time, pretty much every time you see snow on film, it's them. So they came and covered the entirety of Tubbyland with, uh, you know, like a membrane and then not just a little cat, huge, great cannon going whoosh, whoosh, splurged the whole thing and covered us all with snow and you had to walk around with a with a mask on because <laughs> so you didn't inhale any of this stuff and then um, years later you would still in the corner of the dome there would be a little glue of, <laughs> of old snow but it, it was amazing the thing we hadn't taken into account was of course because it was august and everywhere was white now instead of green the sun would bounce back up and it was like twice as hot as it was ordin oh. ordinarily been because you had the heat coming off the ground as well as from above. So it was kind of challenging, but also fun. And everybody entered into the spirit of it, you know, like our chef made Christmas dinner in the middle of it. And <laughs> yeah. uh. one day and, you know, people sang carols and things. It was hilarious. Oh. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I would have... Oh, I would I would imagine, but um, because in the in the first batch of Christmas episodes, like the one with the Christmas tree, I would imagine it would have taken them ages to put all the Christmas decorations all over the dome. Because Josh, yeah, we did it actually for our game for around Christmas time. I think it was last year, and it took over a month to get every little detail right. Yeah, that's how obsessive we were at making sure yes. we'd done it properly. Dedication. And <laughs> you know our motto: we pay too much attention to this stuff. Trademark. <laughs> These guys are precious. Yeah. Oh, that's for sure. 
Um, before I say anything, it says here the meeting's going to end in six minutes. Um, in case we don't, in case there's still a little bit more we want to talk about, we, if we can rejoin here and we'll come back to finish our last couple things. But before we get to that, Richard, your question. Yes. Okay, so um, my question is, um, looking back, have you got any regrets about the show? As in, is there anything you wish you had done better? Or something about the final product that you were not satisfied with? No, I thought I was utterly perfect the whole way through. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was rather quick, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you, there is one thing. In the opening titles, there's a section where we run down the hill, uh, run down the, the outside of the dome, mm -hmm. and then we run up the hill opposite. And, you know, I was used to running up. I could not every single time and I wasn't even the person highest up the dome and I'd be going like the clappers down the dome and across the flat bit and up the hill opposite and I was always last and I look at it now and just think couldn't I get up that bloody hill so that's the one that really <laughs> sticks in my mind I just have no idea I don't know maybe I was sickening for something I don't know I just could not get up that hill as fast as I wanted to <laughs> understandable Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if you had to wear um, a suit where you couldn't literally see anything in your peripheral. Yeah. No, yes, or really any vision. <laughs> or any vision at all. It was so interesting yeah. when a couple years ago when we actually got to talk to Dave and he mentioned in his interview, just, just pointing it out as a comment, the timestamp thing that you suggested of look of like people with microphones shouting where you had to look. So if you had to look at the windmill, windmill two, three, so everybody would turn to the windmill. Hearing that in Dave's interview, I'm like, that was interesting. And then I saw it in your book and saw that you came up with it. I'm like, wow, that's cool to know where that came from. <laughs> because he said that the whole thing was shot basically like a silent film. It's a good thing, too, with all of John swearing. It would have been really fun to edit out. Oh, <laughs> my God. No, the thing wasn't shot like a, sil a, a silent film. That's not correct. Um, because they taped, they taped us the whole time, and then we just had to go down to Pinewood and re-record a, a, a right. clean track. Because mm -hmm. the mechanisms would make like kajunka kajunka noises, and we'd be going <laughs> and everything. So we had to do a clean track. But no, it wasn't shot in silence. Well, all right then. Um, before we get too deep into things. Um, we would like to, if you wouldn't mind, Nikki, having a look at our game and seeing... Because you've seen it in pictures, yeah. but there's... It's another thing entirely, actually, seeing it in motion. Um, we actually... I remember this very distinctly. When we released the 25th anniversary update for it, there was somebody that played it, and they got to the intro, and we had... Well, I won't spoil anything, but once they load in and see the land, they almost cried. And Aww. it's it's one of those when you whenever I do any kind of work on the game, I gotta remember people like that that are that have grown up on this show for so long and just get hit with that wave of nostalgia as soon as they yeah. join. Um, yeah. So it's a beautiful thing, though. It really is beautiful, yeah. um, but it, it puts a pressure on you as well to kind of make sure you get it done right. You gotta, sure. That's how we've done everything. And down to yes. the most minute of detail. Yes, and I know what you mean, you know, because, I mean, that was the thing about writing the book and doing the show. You don't want to go and just tramp all over everyone's memories and, what, right. you know, what they hold in their hearts. So whilst I wanted to sort of share some secrets, I also wanted to kind of keep keep the spirit of Tubbies alive and keep, keep, keep respectful of the people who... Um, who, like you say, hold, hold, hold it in special esteem. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Just like us. Because, like, really, for, for a lot of us, it's... For Benji in particular, it got him through the toughest times in his life. If it wasn't for this show, he would... I hate to oh, say yeah, it so right. bleakly. Yeah, uh, yeah but he might not be yeah. here. Oh. Well, I'm glad, Benji, and I'm glad you get to, you get to wear Tessa's coat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just a quick mention, Nick, uh, just a quick mention though, I, um, it helped me get through that as well, because I got, when I got diagnosed with autism I, when I was young, 
this show helps me get through a lot, and I, 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 I thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're very welcome, and you're not on your own there, Liam. I can't tell you. Quite often, I have um, people with autism who are now grown up, but who watched it when they were littles, uh, telling me how much it helped them. And even now, if they are having a little bit of a wibble or a freak out, that it's, they still find it very calming. And I think that's something to be hugely proud of. Oh, yes. And I'm really yeah. glad, you know, nothing could make me happier than to hear that, really. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah, it's really has been a show that has transcended even generations. Like, like there's still young kids that are still watching the original show. And that's, yeah. If there's any more of an honor to the quality of the show, that is it. That is very much it. Um, For this segment, we're going to showcase our three to four years of hard work. Oh, yes. It actually, wow. it was Reset's game that started it all. And as for me, I only came, came into the scene after like a year or so. I was one of those key people that really kicked off the game in terms of its development along with one of my greatest friends Sebi who's from Norway he really really made the game have its charm oh yes um, he specifically modeled the voice trumpets and we get so into the nitty-gritty that we know that there's six different versions one of them appeared twice and we had them all modeled perfectly as they were seen in the show all over the dome. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, Richard, if you don't mind. Yeah. If you don't mind showing what Give we've done. Yeah. Hmm. Now, I'm not promising. I love that it's so going... international, also, that you're all from all over the place. It's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of which, I technically grew up watching the show in two separate languages except for English of course. I've only learned English progressively as I you know matured over the years and um, English itself kind of became a passion of mine um, whenever I um, it's just it's always been a passion of mine and um, the older I got the more I got to learn about the language and so I've been becoming more fluent at speaking it. Yeah, really. It's actually funny you mentioned that, Richard, because we do actually have somebody on our server. He's a Russian, and he said very. He said to us that he learned English from watching Teletubbies, which mm -hmm. is oh, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do I sh share a screen in this? Uh, I can't see. Oh, there it is. Click um, the big green share button. That would be the one. Okay, so <laughs> can you see it? There we are. I don't think this is sharing it. Yes. Oh, yep. Now, so I'm going to do some hacking around in there. Flying around. To tell you. To tell you. So it enables me to, you know, give you like a bird's eye view of the actual set. It's way bigger than the one. It sure is. <laughs> than the actual thing. Oh. I felt. That was an felt. accident. Don't mind um, that. We tried to make it feel like the like it was intended to be. It was intended to be large, even though the real set really wasn't that big, right? Um, Still yeah, quite big. Got the windmill. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which we have gone to again excruciating detail to try and recreate. We have some models that are going to be even more accurate than this that we're waiting on. Um, yeah. And of course. Well, we've only got these. Who are they? <laughs> 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 and um, this is where you get to change the time as well as no, no, this is for the time and this is for the weather so right. you can actually if I'm going to hop over there let's just set this to maybe 12 I suppose and change this to 7 I think but this is actually this is good enough we're going to go with that so something we did, um, there was a, another server member and I, her name is Kat Cuddler, she lives in the Netherlands. Her and I designed those, and we took elements from inside the dome, try and I make perfect. Tell. Yeah. yeah. That's so here's, amazing, that's really accurate. It's actually yeah. a little bit too big, 
<laughs> were that a bit wide, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. And you've got all these knickknacks working as well. Yep, Tubby Punji. And you can actually, you know how in the show you'd hit the button, you'd speak into the microphone, and you press it again and make the sponges appear? Well, you can do that in this. You can click the button, yeah. click the mic, and then click the button again, and it'll do the sequence as and if it's in the show. Levers in there as well. I, I genuinely can't even put into words how much work has been put into this. Like I can tell. It looks fabulous. incredible. And then we've even got the tubby ties, which of course works. But we have very little time, so I won't be able to demonstrate everything. But the main highlight of everything would have to be this. Our voice trumpets, and just, right. And it's just going to free cam. And these are the models that my good friend made. Just take a look at... That's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's a voice Down trumpet. Down to the details right? and everything. Yes. Yeah. At least one of them. There's six different models in here which i'm eventually going to you know pull up i don't know if you remember this particular episode oh where you and the crew were sitting in the beds and all these five pts popped up and just started playing music um in yeah. numbers five version three if i remember correctly <laughs> yep yeah, yep yeah, correct correct yeah and they can also turn and everything it's it's as unfortunately the sound is not going through, but they have all their accurate show sounds. Like everything is there. And what mm -hmm. what have you done, or where do you stand with the whole um, copyright issue? Our what issue is basically like yeah, it's pretty much just that. I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that they know that we exist, but we try and treat this as official of a product as we can, to try and keep in our good graces, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's Honestly, kind of where we sat with it, really. Yeah. We're all genuinely impressed with how everything turned out. And so just so in think. case I wouldn't, just, just in case I wouldn't forget showing this, we've even got the rare sixth one. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> forgive, forgive me for that, but we've even got the rare one, which only appeared like twice in the show. And I bet you Liam knows exactly which two. Um. <laughs> I only kid. Each of them also play their consecutive sounds from the show. Mm. Right, so if you... Oh. You've got the Tubby Custom Machine, which also has all of its functions yeah. and everything. Yep, yeah, I can see. Mm. And you can actually <laughs> make Tubby Custom with it. And it doesn't make a... It doesn't make a pain in the butt mess. Unlike your real life. <laughs> you don't have to remember Never mind which the smell. <laughs> Well, actually, you still do, but... <laughs> and then we're gonna go outside, and... Do you remember, Richard, where the swing is? I think I do. Although, Brand this one is still oh, it should work be in progress. This one is still work in progress, I think, but... Yeah, because we actually want to make it swing, but, yeah. Get a better one. Oh, and there it is. Now, it, now it doesn't actually um, do anything. You can just sit in it, but, yeah. Since we weren't able to make it functional, although, if we go over here... Oh, yeah, to the... Oh, I yes. won't. I won't spoil anything else there. Mm -hmm. Oh. There's more of it where it came from. clever of me to have known that those were the things you had. <laughs> oh, we have lots more than that. We have the flag, we have the watering can, We've got, which you can actually pick up the watering can and start watering the flowers, and they talk the back to you. Oh, oh, the guitar. Oh, the guitar. That's my absolute favorite. Oh, the favorite. guitar. Speaking of which, I actually made the model that we initially used in the game. It's just that I don't know where the bloody hell it is. That's where the kites would, are. Um, otherwise, yeah, otherwise I we'll believe see it. it's somewhere around. I thought it was on that, yeah, it's on that hill. This is it. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that's that it, yeah. If I remember correctly. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it is. There it is. And so, I was the one who actually made this model from scratch. And of course, when you actually... The way that they work is that you find them, you find the sparkles, you click on them, they appear, they play all their sounds, 
and then you can click on them again and they disappear and it took me a long time to make the guitar fly away it yeah. took me a really long time and um, it actually flies off as you flip it mm. again oh there it goes there it goes, there it goes. Mm. Bye -bye. Yeah. A really yeah. good, a really good segment, well, I would say. <laughs> okay, is there anything else that we should? Um. Tell you? Now, this is something that wasn't. I've actually... only got about five minutes, guys. I'm afraid. Okay, Hello. we'll keep it br keep it brief here. Um, here's this a little is reference. That never appeared in the show, but we made a little reference to um. Oh, there's the guitar. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. And we've got the train from the from the PS1 game as so, a little lead thread. So we, we cut deep. We cut pretty much everything, even the games we go through. Um, I think that's pretty much, since we're so time limited, um, I think that's all we have to show here. Actually, um, actually no, one no. last thing. One last thing, Richard. Show her the intro, the intro VTs. Or we could also do this. Oh, the outro, right. <laughs> we could actually do that for the outro. Yeah. And then just add some effects in the post processing. Oh, now, yeah. For the intro, we're also going to do this. This was a funny coincidence. So we put that one in the background there years before we did this. And if you line it up just right, you have all six of them in the intro shot, even though there was only ever five in the intro. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> ah. It's one of the greatest coincidences ever. Well, there's quite a few that we've come across. Um, unintentional too, but there it is. <laughs> there it is, yeah. So, Nikki, I would like to thank you once again for taking time out of your schedule um, for talking with us. So yeah, I th I th I guess that concludes it. So, not to not. Bye bye. I suppose you're right. Yeah, <laughs> let's actually switch over to this. So. As it's been a joy to speak with you all. Thank you, Nikki. Thank really. You, yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a tremendous so much, pleasure <laughs> having the opportunity to talk to you, especially you're having welcome. to meet someone who I genuinely recall from my childhood. Oh yeah. Even despite oh. being from a completely foreign country and having the op having an opportunity like this like it's mm. absolutely brilliant indeed, indeed my pleasure i'm sorry i didn't have longer no it's okay no, it's, it's all right, right. that's it's fine okay. you're very busy no, you are busy get ready for your next one in bristol right <laughs> oh. no i've done bristol oh you've so done bristol oh. yeah the next oh. one is in Derbyshire on saturday okay uh, well good luck to that yeah. good luck Nikki. Yeah, thank good luck. But, but, thank, but seriously, Nikki, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it, and um, we all do. We love, we all oh. love, we all, we all love you so much. And I will tell Tessa about her jacket. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks again, guys. Oh no, thank you, really. Before we go, there was one person that wanted to come and speak with you. Um, his name was Simon, also known as Baby Lamb Creations, um, as well as Nostalgia Dude. And they, if you don't mind, we'd like if you could give them a quick shout out. Okay. Err, Nostalgia Dude! Missed ya! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. And also Simon as well. Poor guy. He had classes. So he just he just barely couldn't make it. Yeah, uh, Simon. Yeah, Simon deserved. Can you say something to Simon? Yep. Simon. Uh -oh. So he couldn't make it. 